Good afternoon and welcome to Scotia iTrade's webinar. My name is Conleaf, the Client Education Specialist with Scotia iTrade. I'm pleased to present to you today basic technical analysis with the market guides. Just before we get started, we're just going to take care of some quick housekeeping items and then we'll jump right in. So your sound quality should be good. However, you can always check your quality by clicking on the sound check link in the audio panel of your GoToWebinar toolbar. Now this setup window may be on your secondary screen if in fact you're using two monitors. So today, just be reminded everyone will be muted for sound quality purposes. Lastly, if you're using your computer audio and you're experiencing any issues there with sound, you can always switch over to the telephone. Give us a phone call by using the conference number that you see on your GoToWebinar toolbar, as well as the access code and your audio pin ID. As a quick, <clears throat> as a quick reminder, unless otherwise expressly stated by Scotia iTrade, seminars, webinars, and other educational tools and resources, which is collectively called the content, are provided by independent third parties that are not affiliated with Scotia Capital Inc. or any of its affiliates. Scotia Capital Inc. and its affiliates neither endorse nor approve nor are liable for any third party, third party products or services, third party content, or investment losses arising from any use of the content, including third party content. So just be reminded as we go through the webinar, the information being provided here is for informational as well as educational purposes. So let's quickly review the toolbar feature. At the very top, you've got the orange arrow. Uh, this is uh, a tool that can be used to show or to hide the control panel. At times, the GoToWebinar toolbar might disappear. You can always use the orange arrow uh, just to uh, make it reappear. Also, you can view this uh, presentation in full screen mode by clicking on the computer icon um, on the toolbar. Now, if you've got a question, you can use the hand, uh, hand icon to uh, signal your concern. Uh, however, uh, we prefer to type in the question panel box. I'll be uh, monitoring those actively. So if you've got a question, just type it into the question panel box and I'll be able to um, uh, route, those, route those over to uh, our presenter uh, who will be able to address them uh, for us today. So today's session will be uh, recorded. Um, and so for those of, you know, for those of us who have uh, completed the castle arrangements and indicated that they're, uh, they've provided Scotia iTrade with express consent, uh, that email will go out to you tomorrow. However, if you do not receive an email with, the, with a link to the recording, you can just email me at uh, I, uh, education at scotiaitrade.com and I'll be able to send you out a copy of the recording. <clears throat> now alternatively, we do have some archived webinars on our YouTube channel. Under the demand playlist, we've got a webinars on demand that you can just click on and review any webinars that are there from before. Uh, you can review those at your leisure. That's an on-demand uh, playlist. So I have actually then provided for you uh, the uh, PDF version of this um, uh, seminar or webinar. So if you just click on the handout uh, menu in your toolbar there, you'll see that uh, there are two attachments. Uh, one is the PDF for the presentation and another, uh, and AJ will speak to this in more detail, the other is uh, a quiz that's been provided. That will just help to um, uh, cement the learning and maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's a great little fun quiz. Uh, so AJ will speak to that in just a little bit, but both of those are available. Uh, if you'd like to uh, open them up, you can uh, make notes as AJ uh, goes through the presentation today. Um, so those are there for your benefit. So as mentioned then, uh, today our presenter is AJ Monte. He's the chief market strategist. Uh, for the market guys. Now, he's a, a chartered market technician uh, with over 30 years of experience in the financial industry. Uh, currently serving as chief market strategist, he teaches professionals and novices alike innovative techniques uh, which can help to accumulate and also to protect wealth. Uh, so at this point, and I'm going to just uh, hand you over now to AJ, who will be able to facil facilitate the session, and I'll join you back a little bit later uh, to do some quick wrap-up. So AJ, over to you. Thank you very much, Conleaf, and welcome, everyone. I'm assuming that there are several folks who have participated in a Market Guy web seminar. 
So if you see some material on here that looks familiar, it's, it's intentional. Um, as Conleaf mentioned, we're, we're doing something new where I added a quiz at the end, mainly because this presentation I'm giving today is the first class of a 20 class course that I am offering uh, in the US. And of course, because Scotia contracts me to be their educator, the third party educator, you don't have to pay me for this, of course, but I'm giving you a little sample of what the general population is going to be exposed to. So you're, you're the first ones to actually see this and actually take the quiz. So I, I would even appreciate your feedback. Of course, it's not like you're going to fail a course if you don't get all the questions on the quiz, but it's a 10 question quiz. And to help you better, I would encourage you to try not to look uh, for the answers in the PowerPoint, because remember, Conleaf is giving you both the presentation in PowerPoint form and the file for the quiz, which is also pow in PowerPoint form. So try not to look for the answers. Just go from your memory and what you're learning here. And I think in doing it that way, it'll help you retain the information a little bit longer. And, and so you can apply it to, uh, to your regular activities as you look at the markets. Now, let me open up this in full screen so you can see this. Um, just to uh, inform some of those who, some of you who have not attended any of my web seminars, I come from the old school of following the leader. In other words, when I came onto the trading floor in, uh, I'll be celebrating August 15th will be my 35th year anniversary in the markets. Uh, 35 years ago, almost to the day, I knew nothing about the markets. I knew nothing about trading. I knew nothing about charts. I didn't even have a computer. And computers weren't even the rage at that point. 1982, it, it was an extreme luxury if you had a, even a, an Apple, uh, a Mac at that particular time. Uh, but the way to learn was to find the people who were making the most money, the experts, and more or less mimic what they did, copy like monkey see, monkey do. That was the way we learned. We didn't have even a course like this on how to trade or how to retrade. It was nothing like that. You, you were very lucky if you were in a, in a firm who had an expert that was in their employee to, to show you some of the ropes. But on the other side of that, if you can, if you can imagine, the idea was to find the experts and copy what they do, but once you found the experts, guess what? They weren't so open to sharing what they knew because that information that they knew was extremely valuable. I mean, let's face it, if, if all of a sudden I have this great strategy uh, for trading and it's making me money left, you know, left and right, uh, why would I want to give that away for free? You know, it, 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 it was something that was kept almost top secret. So what I had to do, and it's, it's absolutely based on, on how I came up through the ranks, I would literally go down to the market bar in the World Trade Center, it was in the concourse on the, on the lower level, and on Friday evenings I would drink salsa water with a lime in there. Uh, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to stay about my wits. And I would just look for traders and I would just kind of socialize with them week after week. I would go down to the bar, again, drinking lots of salsa water, and I would pick their brains until after a while I became friends with some of these traders and they would open up a little bit to me. That's how I got my start. And then when I finally did get on the trading floor, I took that same strategy but relocated it to the, the cafeteria. So during lunchtime now, I'm in the back buying lunches for people who were giving me information. We became friends there. And, and, and then the following day would be breakfast. I get a little lesson there and you put it all together. And then I started applying the information that I had learned and lo and behold, it worked and it worked very well. Now, as, as Connelly mentioned, this, you know, this was not written by a lawyer here. This is written by me. It's, it's pretty common sense. Uh, most of the charts that you're looking at are very dated, some of which are uh, go back to 2014. 
I even removed a couple just to make it easier because we're going to try something again that's different where we're going to do more interactive learning as Conleaf drives the platform. You'll be watching me do this. So it is very educational. And the reason we put up slides like this is because we want to make sure people aren't going to just jump in the market based on what they're learning here today. The, the idea is for you to learn it, study it, apply it even in practice format. We call that paper trading, and I'll give you some ideas on that as well. Paper trading, until your percentages of accuracy are maintained at a certain level that you would feel comfortable with. And then, and only then, do you start to ease into the market. And, and I say ease in, it could, be, it could be 50 shares, or if you're an option trader, it could be one contract. We don't want people jumping in because it would be very unfortunate for you if you're a first-time trader and then you lose money on your first trade and then you never go back because now you're scared to lose money. That would be a shame. So we want people to be comfortable as they learn and then apply this information so that you can use it for the rest of your adult life and, and beyond. Teach it to your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, whatever, and you can go from there. So in this first course of my technical analysis, this first class, I should say, of this technical analysis course, these are the five bullet points that you're going to be quizzed on at the end of, of the day when you open up that file and take the quiz. And first and foremost is, is to follow the money. Now, this is a rule that I have, and I told Conley this uh, several times, that this is a rule that I have based my whole educational platform off of. This is the number one rule. If you want to make money in the market, follow the money. Now, look, look at the very bottom, that note. That's a rule. It's not a guarantee. There's a very big difference. It's like when you play, let's say, football, uh, th there, there are rules that the referees uh, regulate during the course of a game, and you could follow those rules all throughout the game, but that's not going to guarantee you're going to win the game. See, this is a rule that you should follow in following the money because we are trend traders, and as investors, we want to put our money where the money is flowing. It's, it's very, very important that you understand the concept behind this rule. And, and, and some of the mistakes that people make, and you may have heard them in the old cliches, you don't want to catch a falling knife. If I, if I could ask a question, I'm sure there'd be a lot of hands going up that, that have heard this before. And, and In other words, you don't want to try to catch a falling knife in the same way you don't want to buy a stock that's falling out of bed, that's collapsing. Because if you are trying to catch that falling knife, you're going to get cut. If you're trying to buy a stock and you're putting your money into a market where money is flowing out, and today is a perfect example. For those who are listening to the recording of this, today is a down day in the market, and there's a lot of concern on the geopolitical forefront, a lot of tensions out there, and investors are a little scared right now so that moving their money out of the market so if you decide to go against that trend and not follow the money then guess what you buy today and tomorrow there's a panic that sets in and now you're getting hurt in a, in a very bad way because you're not following the money you're not you're not going with the trend so that's that's n rule number one right there is to buy with the buyers and sell with the sellers the good thing is that when you're looking at a chart you could actually read what the buyers and sellers are doing and not only can you identify what side they're on in the market but you could also measure the force behind that move that they're making in the market and that is also uh, true for investing as we move on to uh, to moving averages which is going to be right after the different price charts here uh, Conleaf is going to start drawing those on so when uh, what we don't have in the presentation, I'm preparing you ahead of time here, is that when you see us switch to the live chart and start taking some of the stocks that you submit to us, Conleaf is actually going to start building what's called moving averages. I know I'm getting a little ahead here, but it's important that I tell you this. When, when you see the charts switch to live, live session, he's going to be using live charts, get your pen and, and paper out 
and start taking notes. We'll, we'll slow it down for you so you can see exactly what the steps are in how to build a moving average on your chart. And whether you're using Flight Desk or not, most charting platforms, and I'm saying the large majority of platforms, have the ability for you to put on moving averages onto the chart. So let's, let's talk about the charts first. What is a chart? Well, like I said, in 1982, we didn't have the computers to give us the information. We had to actually build and draw our own charts. And the way we did that, again, was with sharpened pencils and graph paper. And so we would watch the markets, and at the end of the day, we would literally record what had happened that day, and we would use a, a chart that's not listed here. It's, it's called point and figure charting, just a bunch of X's and O's. So I'm not going to get into this, the exact details of that. But it was a way to record price history. And day after day, week after week, month after month, we would continue to document and log in the price history of that particular commodity or stock that we were trading. So in other words, what we were doing was we were recording the historic price movement on paper. And interestingly enough, when you get enough data, you could actually see where the buyers and where the sellers are stacked up. This is also known as supply and demand. When there is more demand for a stock than there is supply, prices start to go up at that point. It's called support. And when there's more supply than there is demand, prices go down. And again, you could see that on a chart. So when these, these price levels started to build up when supply and demand or support and resistance, then we would, we would know ahead of time what the, the buyers and sellers were most likely to do with that price level. So to start off, a basic line chart looks like this. Some of you may have uh, the financial uh, stock ticker on your phone. The, you know, smartphones are absolutely amazing. I mean, my iPhone has more memory than, oh, geez, 100 of my first computers combined. My, my first computer was an IBM Model 50. It had 50 megs of hard drive. You could barely get 10 charts on there before it would be full. Uh, but nowadays, you could actually pull up line charts on your, uh, on your smartphone. I don't know how many of you use Yahoo Finance. You can't see me doing this, but I'm actually on my phone and I'm looking at different stocks. If I, if I click on a stock and then turn my phone sideways, the whole, ch the whole chart comes up and it is a line chart. So if you, if you have a smartphone and you load one of these stock ticker app applications on your phone, most likely that's going to be a line chart. So I'm starting off with a line chart so you could become more familiar with what that looks like and more importantly how you would read it. The line chart only collects one data point and in most instances it's, it's the closing price of the day. Now some line charts, again if you're using a smartphone, you could switch it to minute by minute, where each data point represents the closing price for each minute. So one minute passes, there's a point. The next minute, it closes, boom, there's another point, and then it connects all the dots. So that's the most basic chart uh, platform that you'll see. Uh, the next is actually something that's becoming, I don't want to say more obsolete, it's just, it, it's just, there are less people using it. There's still a lot of people that use it, but more and more people are gravitating to candle charts, as you'll see in the next slide. A bar chart collects four data points, the open, the close, the high, and the low. And, and so you can, you can see what had happened during the course of the day. You know how much of a price range there was for that particular stock on that day because the vertical line will show the high and the low and the the hash marks on the side the left side shows the opening the right side shows the close so in the figure to the left you'll see that on that day the the stock closed lower than it had opened in the morning now on the right side you can see a little bit different 
the opening price was lower than the close or else the close was higher than the opening. So you can see that was an up day. And, and, and so you can get a lot of information, but what had happened was the Japanese uh, over, over 200 years ago uh, decided they're going to they're going to take this concept and and modify it a, a bit, and so what they did is they basically draw a rectangle around the open and the close hash marks, and if it was a down day, they would call that a closed candle, and if it was an up day, they would call it an open candle. Then technology took over in the in the late 90s, and what happened? The technicians decided they were going to color code them. Remember, when the Japanese started using candle charts, it was the Japanese rice traders that came up with this, and the candles had different sizes. The, the colored area of this particular candle chart is called the body of the candle. Now, each and every day, the length of that body is different than the last day. And so you can see the force behind the move depending on how long the, the body, the colored area of the candle is. Today, because it's a big down day, we have a lot of red and very long bodied candles showing up on the charts because it's a down day. Now, for those, again, listening to the YouTube channel, to the recording, you might be looking at the chart on a day when it's an up market. And so you might have long green candles. It, it depends on which day you're looking at the chart. But the point is you're still getting the same number of data points. You're getting four, but the color coding makes it just that much easier on the eye to gauge, you know, the force and who is controlling the stock. Again, I'm just going to flip back and forth. You can see there's the bar chart. There's the candle chart. Again, very, very similar, same data points. But look how much easier with the color coding. It just gives you an instant uh, read on on that particular stock now um, Conley if, if you um, I see uh, oh I see a question came up from Daniel can we take the remainder of the courses and if so where do I find the link well Daniel uh, we are not completely done with all the 20 classes so unfortunately I cannot give that to you right now but you could absolutely uh, go to the Market Guys course, uh, excuse me, Market Guys websites right there at the bottom left of the screen and shoot me a message. You can shoot me a message and when we are finally done with, a, with the editing and the production, because it's also in video format, um, then we will uh, notify you if that's okay. Just shoot me a message there through the website. Okay. Any other questions, by the way? We are monitoring those. And Conleaf is also monitoring by show of hands how many people are uh, actively participating here in this presentation. So keep the questions coming. I love it. And it's actually going, your questions, believe it or not, are going to help everyone on this call and everyone who's listening to the recording, which ultimately could be many thousands of people. So don't be shy. Okay, ask your questions. It's very good. Okay, now let's move on to... The, uh, the vertical line that I alluded to earlier, which shows the difference between the high and the low of the day. The vertical line, let me see if I can get my, uh, my pen to, to color. Let me see, I'll do it in blue, okay? This vertical line to the left here on, on the red candle, this vertical line that protrudes from the upper part of the body that gives us an indication that on that day, the buyers, believe it or not, pushed it up. During the course of the day, pushed it up to that high point. So I'm going to put an H that represents the high. But because there is no vertical line under the shadow down here, under the body, I should say, down here, what that tells us is on this day, the buyers were able to push it up from the opening to this high, but then they pushed it all the way down to the low of the day. And there is no line under the body of the candle because what had happened is we didn't run out of price movement, we ran out of time. So what, what that tells us is the market had closed right on the low of that day. Now, let's see. 
uh, I do see question and answers. How many of you can tell me, I'm going to ask you a question, let's see if, if the answers come in on the Q&A box. On the day to the left, if I am going to ask you who is in control of the market that day, the buyers or the sellers, what would be your answer? So in other words, on this day, who had the most control? Who controlled the market right up until the end of the day? The buyers or the sellers? Who wants to be the first one? Type that in. Nicole, absolutely right answer. First to answer, Robert close second by a nose. Hey, Robert, welcome back. Thank you for, for attending. Prem, you're all right. You're all right. The sellers are controlling. Now, remember rule number one. If you want to make money in the market, you have to follow the money. It's a rule. Again, no guarantee. I'm going to reiterate that over and over because if you decide you're just going to sell on this day without looking at any other market's indications, you might be not doing the right thing because you're not getting all the information. This is just a little taste of what's happening with the money. Thank you, Ken. Oh, welcome back, Ken. Another regular attendee. Great. Okay. So let me erase that. I'll just go back and re, re uh, load that. Okay. So now on the left hand, on the right hand side, I should say, we have a green candle, which tells us the market opened let me get my pen. The market opened. Let me get that pen out there. There we go. The market opened right here. I'm going to put an O right there. It opened there and it went all the way down after the opening to the low here. I'm going to put an L there. And then on this day, after it hit that low, it proceeded to go all the way up. And at the end of the day, it closed right on the high. Again, pretty simple. I don't need to ask you the answer in this because you all got the first one right. You'll get the second one right. On this day, the buyers were in control. Now, if, if I told you that, okay, uh, the next day the candle looked like this, same green body, but now again there was a shadow, are you still convinced that the buyers are in control? You could, the answer could be yes, because the candle is green, but if there's a shadow above the candle, and now the high of the day is up here, that does tell us that the sellers had a little bit of fight left in them by the end of the day, because what that tells us is that the stock opened up just where it did before, it went down, it came up up here and then came down again to close at, at this high of the body. See? So what that tells us, it's not as strong as the one without the shadow on the top, but it does tell us the buyers were in control, but the sellers had some fight left. And so that is not as strong of a buy candle than the one with just the shadow underneath the candle. And again, if you have any questions about that, Submit them in the Q&A box, and, and I'll absolutely help you with this. So again, I'm, I'm doing uh, these slides little by little so that you can use them as building blocks. You look at the candle. You look at the color of the candle. You look at the length of the shadows. You look at the length of the bodies, and you put that all together. And what happens is after a while, believe it or not, you start to get so familiar with these signals that you don't even have to think about it. It's like, it's like leading, uh, learning a new language. Um, in, at beginning, when you're learning a new language, whether it be French, Spanish, whatever, you have to learn one word at a time, and then you start putting the words together in sentences. And then you, the, the, when you become fluent, uh, again, I don't know how many of you are fluent in other languages, but you know you're fluent when you stop translating in your mind. You start to think in that language. And that's how technical analysis is. Right now, you're learning word by word. And soon, you'll be putting these words together in sentences. And then after six months, nine months, maybe 12 months, now you're not even thinking about it. You're just reacting to the signal because it's so loud in your mind that you know, it's a clear buy or a clear sell or support, whatever. All right, now Brian has a question. How do you know? When it's down at the beginning of the day, could this not happen any time of the day or jump 
or the jump happen right at the end of the day. Well, Brian, you're absolutely right. The sequence in which I drew those lines to tell the story of what happened during that day, it, it could have happened uh, maybe not in the same sequence that I told you. It could have happened uh, a different way. It could have it could have opened. Um, oh, oh, oh! I got ahead of myself here. It could have opened at the at the regular opening price here. It could have gone up here, come right to this high. It could have come down here to that low. It could have gone up and down during the course of the day, but ultimately wound up at that high. You see, so it's not showing the volatility of the price action during the course of the day. It's just showing you the end result. Okay. Now, what I would encourage you to do, Brian, is take your charting platform and change the frequency of the uh, candles from daily intervals to minute by minute intervals and sit there during the course of the day and watch how each minute forms on the uh, on the charts. Maybe we can do that with Conleaf when we get to them. I don't want to run behind you. I have so much to talk about and have to squeeze it in in, in a short hour, but uh, we'll get we'll get it all in for you. Okay, so again, this is just a recap of what I just uh, disclosed to you so that you have it in your file. Remember, you're going to download this. If you want to, um, you could print this one, one slide out, keep it by a computer. But there it is, showing you the opening versus the close and the high during the course of the day. Okay. Now, this, again, is a recap of what I said about the uh, green candle. The long shadow, in fact, a lot of the time when you see a long shadow like this, uh, if I could, let me. I'm going to try to draw in some um, some candles. Watch, watch my uh, cursor here as I draw. Let, I'm not going to draw shadows. I'm just going to draw bodies. Let's say on this rectangle body that was a red candle. The next day is also a red candle, and you see the sequence of these candles are moving lower. You see how we're we're in a the, the short term trend here is in a downward trend. You see that? And then you might have on the fourth day an even lower candle, again all red. A lot of times when you see a candle that has a long shadow below the body, right, like we have here, most of the time you see those long shadows at the end of a downward leg, the leg meaning a short-term trend. So again, when you turn on your live charts, I want you to just study the charts each and every day. Pick one thing that you're going to look for. Today might be a day you're looking for long shadows on the bottom or on the top. Tomorrow you might be looking for long colored candles, whether they be green or red. Each day do something to hone your skills on chart reading so that you could again not have to think about it you just react to it all right and that, that'll be a big big help for you so a lot of times I know I know investors and even traders who when they see long shadows underneath the candle that's the day they're gonna buy those stocks and when they see long shadows above the candle those are the days they sell the stocks and I have a I have an example of, of an actual chart and how it's laid out so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about there. And uh, again, this is this is it right there. You can see that, uh, let me get my, I don't know, for some reason I have to keep pulling the pen up in that color. Okay, so here is a good example right here. See, oh, I just gave away all the good stuff. All right, let me do it again. <laughs> all right, so here is a downward trend here. And then you can see the long shadow showing up here. You see that? And then here again is a long shadow under the candle. There aren't the models that I've shown you in the previous slides, but you can get the point there. Even here is a long shadow. And you can see that when the long shadows below and the long shadows above the candle start to form, they usually form at those pivot points. You see? So the strategy behind looking at candles that have long shadows the strategy is to buy on these days that have the long shadows now on this particular day 
you might have bought the stock a lot higher. You never always, very, very rarely you're going to be able to buy at the very low of that day because when it's on the low, it's not looking like that. When it's on the low, it would, it would look like a red candle actually. But by the end of the day, towards the end of the day, you're usually buying at the top of a candle like that. So the strategy is if you see a long shadow, you're following the money. Remember, the buyers are in control on that day, so you're buying with the buyers. Remember from slide one. And what you do is you immediately set a price alert or, in some cases, a stop order, if you have the ability to do that, to get out if the stock breaks down below that low. So, in other words, if you buy here, you're, you're going to put a protective stop or a get out point down below that low. Now, as the stock goes up, you're moving that get out point higher and higher. We call that ratcheting or we also call it trailing the stock. So, as the stock goes higher, you're going to uh, monitor your profits but also monitor your risk. So, if you buy on a day that has the long uh, shadow underneath the candle, you might say, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the stock to go up." But then all of a sudden, you may not wait for where my arrow is. You may get out on a day like that because there's a long shadow above the candle. You might have bought on the bottom low lower shadow. You might have sold right on that day right up there where I just drew the arrow, and and you still would have made money. But Let's look at let's look at some um, well this is a, a, a example of like perfect world scenario but we'll go to the live charts and I'll show you exactly I'll point some of these out I can guarantee you that almost every single chart we look at it's going to have uh, a long shadow somewhere on the candle now here's here's where it starts to get a little bit more complex even though these are simple moving averages gets a little bit complex but not over the top you know crazy complex it's it's a moving average it in a, the way I look at the moving average is it's it's basically in my mind I translate the simple moving average as the fair value of the stock and the the moving average is just a simple math formula that calculates the average price of a stock over X periods of days minutes or even months and and so depending on how you have your chart set up the moving average is going to give you two things it's going to give you um, a reference point as to where the stock would be at fair value it's also going to give you an indication of which way the money is going so if the moving average is trending up it means that over the short period of time over those X number of days the buyers have been coming into that stock and that's how we look at that so this is Conley's uh, uh, cue to go take control back from me we're going to go to the live charts now and Conley and I both uh, came to the conclusion that it would be good for you to see how to actually add a moving average to the chart so uh, if someone would like to volunteer a stock symbol Conley, if, if you could maybe exp there you go beautiful okay so this this looks like um, a three month daily chart now Conley, can we move that back from three months maybe go 12 months can we back it up that would be good and who would like to volunteer a stock symbol just type that in and we'll pick that up and we'll put it into into the trading platform again this is the flight desk trading platform as a Scotia uh, client you are eligible to have this platform I would check with your relationship manager to if you don't have it ask them how you can get it and put it on your computer okay so we don't have any stock symbols yet or is that just delayed let's see who anyone could put a stock in there all right Apple Claude Claude came up with AAPL let's look at that now Remember what the moving average is. It's the average price of a stock over X number of days. So let's start with a 10 period moving average. And now here's where you take your notes now, folks. This is where you write down what you have to do. So you click, Conley, why don't you uh, think out loud and tell everyone what your hand strokes are right now so everyone can write that down. If we have to repeat it, we can do that. Go ahead. 
Okay, great question. So on the flight desk uh, toolbar, uh, what you want to do is click on your chart, somewhere on your chart, and then just do, uh, push down the space bar to get the quick menu. This is probably the quickest way of uh, navigating the different uh, functionalities. So I've pushed on the space bar, and then I can click on the moving average, as AJ had mentioned. So the first simple moving average, I click on that, and it provides me, oh, no, I want, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. The moving average to the price, yeah. Yes. So I want to do an in-graph indicator uh, on the first simple moving average like this. Okay. And then All we right. want to change that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, AJ. Now, and now you just changed the color by how? Because that was very fast how you did that. Oh, sorry. What I've done then, is I just wanted to highlight the, 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 uh, the line. So I clicked on the line. And then when I right-click it, I can actually change the moving average, period. Um, so what was the period you wanted, AJ? 10, just 10. 10 days. Okay, perfect. There we go. So this okay. is the 10-day moving average. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, Conley, stay with me as I build uh, the moving averages on the chart with you. Okay, so again, Claude submitted AAPL, and you can see that the 10-day moving average is giving us an indication as to what the trend is looking like for the short term. So you can see that since July 2nd, Apple, the stock, has been trending upward. See, so what the moving average does, the 10-day the moving average, it kind of smooths out the volatility and almost converts the chart to a line chart from a candle chart. It doesn't, it, 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 it does very similar, uh, it reacts very similarly to a line chart, but what it does is it smooths out the price action. So that's the average price of the stock over a five-day period. Now, remember what I said about the, uh, the fair value being represented here. You can see that today Apple is down, and, and the stock is pulling back towards that moving average. That, that's very, very common for a stock to move back or gravitate back to the moving average. So uh, when, when there is a stock that moves way above the moving average like it did there, right? You see how it moves way above? We call that the rubber band effect. So imagine the, uh, a rubber band with one end connected to the moving average, the other end connected to the stock. When that rubber band gets stretched, it eventually will snap back towards the moving average. And that's how you can tell when a stock is overbought or oversold. Look on June, uh, it's like June 16th, 17th, Right there, see how far down below that moving average move, they, the price moved from the moving average. The rubber band was stretched, and four days later, it was right back to the moving average. Now, keep that in mind as we switch the moving average now from a 10 day to let's go 20 day. So, Conley, if you click on that line, and now he's changing it to a 20 day moving average. Now, watch, watch the line. See, see how. It moved, the, the line shifted a bit. It, the, the moving average now, the 20-day moving average, is not trading as closely as it did like the 10-day moving average did. Conleaf, can you put two moving averages up at the yep, same sure time? Can. Okay. Sure can. Yeah, explain how you do that. Okay, so we can do up to three moving averages. Uh, so first, second, and third. So I can click on the second here. Do you want to go Actually, to third? Let's go, okay, let's, go, let's go third. Let's put it a uh, 10, a okay. 20, and a 50. Okay, so uh, let me then change this back then to a 10. And I'll change the second to a... A 20. 20, okay. And, and then, then we'll... The last to a 50. 50, okay, beautiful. There we go. Okay. Now, not, not to confuse anyone here, it was just showing you the difference between the moving averages. So the point that I want to make is that the 10-day the, uh, moving average is going to be more liquid or, or it trades more closely to the price of the stock. The longer moving average, the 50-day moving average, which is the yellow one right there that's now turned light blue, that is a 50-day moving average, and and the 50-day moving average is used more for investors than traders. The most popular moving average is the 20. It's the orange one, 
or yellow, whatever that is, now blue. That moving average is the most popular because 20 trading days is what is represented in one month because each week we have five trading days and it is four weeks in, in any given month. So five times four is 20. So the 20 period moving average is the one I like the most. It, it's your preference, of course, but I like it the most because it gives me a good indication of where the stock is relative to its fair value. So if I see a stock that's stretched far below or far above that moving average, I am on guard and ready for the price to start to revert back towards that moving average. Again, the rubber band effect is what you want to pay attention to. And I'm going to give you some references to go to learn more about that as well. Okay, Conley, if, if you we can go back to the slides, I'll I'll go ahead and, and go through this. I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up just a little bit uh, because I am uh, going to have 15 minutes to get through the rest of the slides, which we'll be able to do no problem. Okay, so there's the moving average, and this is um, the, the line. The dotted lines represent support. The, the dotted line, remember I said before, support represents demand for the stock. It's when the buyers take control back from the sellers. And that is one of the most important things that we want to look for on a chart is support. This, my friends, is what made me a lot of money in the silver markets and still does. Um, this uh, blue dotted line, now you have to put the moving averages aside. This is not a moving average. This is a line that you would learn to draw on your own chart where the R represents resistance, support is represented in the S. But an interesting thing happens when resistance is broken. And I go, I know there's uh, some regular attendees that know this already, but I'm going to reiterate and rehash this over and over again because it is a, a very, very important concept where once resistance is broken here, so you see the stock bumped its head against the ceiling, broke through the ceiling here. See, this is where we call that the breakout. When a breakout occurs, former resistance then turns into new support. And it, again, it's something that we see over and over again happen on the charts. Um, in, in essence of time, let me just tell you that if you go to the Market Guys website, I'm not going to go to my website. You can do that yourself. Go to themarketguys.com. And at the very top of the page, there's a link that says videos, videos. These are free, very short videos. We call them market shots. They're seven to eight minutes long. Look at the one on the rubber band effect and look at the one on roll reversal. Those are two videos that are in there. So both those videos are not going to take you more than 15 minutes to go over, but it's something you could keep replaying over and over and over again until you get it. And I, I would encourage you to learn how to draw those lines. Look at a chart. Try to find the roll reversal. Draw the horizontal line. Roll reversal is 99% is, um, of the time you're drawing them in a horizontal fashion. So it's fairly easy once you get the concept down. Now, resistance obviously is the opposite of support. Resistance is when you have more supply than demand. And so these lines are drawn to connect those highs so you can see the areas where sellers have a tendency to move in. So if you own a stock and all of a sudden you see a stock starting to pull back from support, well, you need to be on guard with that. You need to be more protective or defensive, whatever you want to call it. That is when you need to think about, and you don't have to take action at that particular point, but you need to monitor the, the conditions of the market and be ready to do something. When you see a stock hitting resistance and it starts pulling back, you might put a protective order in, a, uh, a price alert. You might want to do an option trade. You might want to just get out of your trade and take a profit entirely. You know That's up to you. But when a stock hits resistance and you own that stock or thinking about owning the stock, the area of resistance will most likely affect the, the decision and the outcome of that particular trade. Now, the role reversal happens on the way down as well. And so when you have support here that is broken here, so in other words, the price starts moving down below that line of support, then it reverses the roll so that now the stock is going to bump its head against this new resistance area. Again, a lot of times I talk about it 
as though you're walking on a pond that has ice on it. You're going to find that more up in Canada than I will in Florida here, obviously. But if you're walking on a sheet of ice and all of a sudden you start to hear the ice cracking beneath your feet, you know that if you keep walking, you're going to break through the ice. If you fall through the hole in the ice, the former floor that you were walking on now becomes the ceiling and now you're in trouble. You know, you're going to be gasping for air trying to get out of that position because it's bad. And the stock is the same way. Once it breaks through support, the support, former support turns into new resistance. Okay, price and volume. Again, this is a repeat of what we had, I think it was two weeks ago, but very, very important. Price is giving us the direction, but the volume is what's measuring the force behind the move. And I'm going to introduce you to Sally, okay? Um, Sally here is flying a kite. And if you've flown a kite, you know that if the kite is pointed in an upward direction, again, kite representing price, that's good. You want the price to go up, right? But in order for the price to go up, you need volume. You need the wind. And if that wind doesn't happen, and if you start to see signs that the wind is starting to diminish, you need to do something. You need to take action. So as the wind under a kite starts to slow down, you'll actually see the kite start to flounder and the same thing happens in a in a price in a price chart when the volume starts to drop you'll see the price start to move sideways it goes from an upward direction it starts floundering and starts going sideways before dropping lower now again if you've ever flown a kite and the, and the kite is pointed towards the ground if you try to run while the point, kite is pointing down, while the wind picks up, while the kite is pointing down, it's going to be driven into the ground. And the same thing happens in a stock. Okay, so this is the textbook model of what that looks like. Okay, price is going up right here very nicely, and you see that the volume is going up very nicely. But then all of a sudden, the price, the volume starts to drop. Now. Many times you'll see the price continue to go up even though the volume is dropping. But that's usually what happens before the downturn. So when you see a drop in volume as the price is going up, that's another sign that you need to pay attention to. Hey, I better be more protective at this point. Otherwise, I could lose and it'll, it'll cost me either my profits or I could suffer a loss if I don't do something. So you have to become more protective when you see the volume start to drop. This is an actual chart. It's the general market. It's dated from 2015. Maybe I should have replaced that one Connolly if I apologize, but that's, that's okay. It's 2015, a couple years ago. It's the general market, it's the S&P. And you can see that the price has gone down. See, on, on the way down right here, uh, you can see that the that the volume is going up as the price is coming down here. You see that? Now, remember rule number one on slide number one. Remember, the number one rule is to follow the money, right? Well, if you see the price going down, here's a test question. All right, if the price is going down, you can answer this in the Q&A box. If the price is going down and the volume is going up, what does that tell us about the selling pressure? Is the selling pressure increasing or is it decreasing? Again, price is going down, volume is going up. Is the selling pressure increasing or decreasing? Who wants to answer that? The selling pressure is increasing. Correct, Brian, you're absolutely right. So if you're thinking about buying a stock and you see it's going down and you see the volume is going up, you might want to wait. Wait a little bit until you see the volume drop because that tells us that the sellers are starting to lighten up. Now on the way up, you can see here price is going up, but now all of a sudden the volume is going down. Uh-oh, what do I do when I see the volume on low points like the arrows are showing? Well, got to be ready. If the price is going up and the volume starts dropping, it means that the buyers are losing their momentum. Does that make sense? Volume is dropping on the way up. Think about the kite. All right, think about Sally. She's got a kite pointed up, but the volume is dropping. So get ready. Kite's getting ready to come down. That's usually what happens with, with uh, flying kites and trading stocks. Simple, just like that. Okay, now um, 
like like Conley said at the beginning, um, we have a quiz. If you have any questions, what I'd really like to see, because there's not that many people on this on this uh, live session, I know there's going to be many many people that listen to the recording. So this is an advantage to the people who are live. If you're taking the quiz and you get an answer wrong on any of the questions, let me know. I, I want to engage with you. I want. I really really want to help you get this down so that you're comfortable. And most importantly, I teach technical analysis so people can learn how to manage their risk better. In my mind, technical analysis is a better risk management tool than it is a forecasting tool. Just like I said, if you own a stock and you're making a profit and then you see the volume dropping, now you might be thinking about capturing that profit instead of letting that profit kind of fall between your fingers and now a profitable trade turns into a losing trade. See, I'm, I really want to help you because I know there's going to be at least one person who hears this presentation and is going to want to share it with someone they care about, whether it be family or a friend. And the more people that learn about this, the more people that are going to be around to, to put their money back in the market because you're not letting it be lost, you're preserving the capital. And that, that helps Scotia too, believe me. That's why they offer such a robust educational uh, program because th as they educate their clients, the clients are going to be uh, less apt to blow themselves up. I mean, let's face it. If you know how to protect yourself now when you see a price collapsing below a major support level, you're going to be around for another day to invest or trade. So Scotia makes out, you make out, we all make out as we come together as a community of chart readers. And I really get a lot of enjoyment in doing this. Hopefully, they came through on the webinar today. Uh, market guys are, are the premier educator when it comes to investing and trading. So feel free to visit us there. Ask me questions. I want to stay in touch with you, and I definitely want to wish you the best of luck. So thank you so much. Uh, remember to download the quiz, and I'm going to pass it back to Connolly for right now. Back to you, Connolly. Thank you. Uh, AJ, there was one question from Leaf. I don't know if you want to just uh, answer that before you zip over. Oh, no. Where is it? Uh, I just sent it over to oh, you. Oh, okay. Let's see. There's a question there. There are so many factors that you can analyze about each stock. How do we pick which stocks to do the analysis on? Okay. What I would suggest you do is you learn about stock screening. Conley, do you have a stock screener built into your website? Not so much the trade Yes, platform. we actually do. Okay. Yeah, we have but an equity screen on our website. Yeah, I would get with your relationship manager at Scotia and learn about the stock, um, the stock screening tools that they have. So what you could do over time, once you learn how to use the, the tool, you can plug in what you want the tool to give you as far as a screen. So for instance, if you're using the stock screening tool and you want to look for stocks that have an increase in volume over time, over X number of days, you could put that in. If you want to screen for a stock that's on a close to a 52-week high rather than a 52-week low, that, that'll give you stocks that have been trending up. If you want to find a stock that has um, a price below or above the moving average, for instance, for over a certain percent, you could plug that in. That that would actually take me a whole nother hour to explain to you how to use it, but that's what Scotia provides you, the tools to screen, to manage risk, and to trade. And that's that's why you're in a good place right now. You really are. So thank you for that question, Leah. Okay, AJ, did you uh, have any other time, do you think? Uh, we got another couple of minutes. Uh, well, I've got two minutes. I think, I think you, you want to show them how to load the, uh, the quiz, right? Oh, yeah. Actually, um, hopefully they've seen that. The quiz is in the handout section uh, along with the presentation. Hopefully you can see that there. Okay. I, I, could, add, I could add something that I think is very important. And, and it is, it's a little personal, but I think it's, it's important. And it's a true story. It just happened the day before last. We have a neighbor, a young kid. I call her a kid. You know, she and her husband have two children. They don't have much money. And their dog, they have a little chihuahua that was attacked by another neighbor's pit bull. And the dog was hurt very severely. And it had broken its jaw. Not to get too graphic, but the dog was in dire shape. And she came to me. She said, AJ, you know a lot of people. Do you happen to know any vets that might be able to help us. We don't have enough money to fix our dog and I don't want to lose her. She's already a rescue animal. 
So I said to Suzanne, I said, Suzanne, let me make a couple phone calls. So I called around. I couldn't find a vet that would do it pro bono or for, for charity or anything. So I, I just couldn't, I couldn't find it in myself to let this animal die. So I called the vet closest to her and I said, listen, one of my neighbors is going to bring in a dog. Please don't tell her that I'm paying for this. Don't tell her how much it is. Just say it's a gift. Just can you do that for me? So I said, there's a vet close to you. Take the dog. They took the dog in. They wired the jaw, taped the jaw, put the dog in, in the dog hospital overnight. And the next day she brought the dog home and she thanked me, not knowing that I was able. I know this. I should, probably shouldn't even told you this. But if I could help any one of you, any one of you, make more money than you need or have enough debt that you can survive on and, and thrive for the rest of your retirement days but still have some left over to help someone like that isn't that a great thing see that's how I look at the markets I look at it as a vehicle for us to get from point A to infinity see you have the potential to not just help your family but to help the people around you share this information with them I hate to see when people lose money in the market because they don't know how to manage risk it's not as complicated as you think it does take some time but definitely go out there and learn it. it it's, it's an investment that will pay you back over and over. The, the time you invest in education is a risk-free investment. It's the time you put in that's going to pay off in the long run. So that's, that's what I have to say. Thank you so much. I went maybe 30 seconds over. But back to you, <laughs> Conley. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you, AJ. Great story. Um, it's always wonderful to be able to get the, these great stories because it provides the great context for us uh, in our investment journey. Uh, so thank you, AJ. Uh, great presentation once again. Uh, great engagement. And I hope you all uh, not only enjoyed, but uh, were able to learn uh, some additional information that will help you along your investment journey as well. Uh, so just a few uh, quick wrap-up here for you now. Um, you can access, as mentioned, the webinar recordings on our YouTube channel. Uh, just scroll down to the bottom of uh, the public uh, Scotia iTrade page, scotiaitrade.com. Scroll to the bottom, you'll see the YouTube link. Click on that and go to the webinars on demand playlist. Or just email me at education at scotiaitrade.com to request a copy of the recording. One quick point to mention uh, as you exit the webinar session, we're going to uh, pop up a short survey. We ask that you just complete that if you don't mind. Spend uh, about five to ten minutes on it if you don't mind. Um, it just helps us to, uh, to know if we're going in the right direction, providing you the information that you want to hear. And if you want to hear something else, just let us know. And also, just let us know how we did today uh, we do share that uh, with our partners uh, AJ is able to then use that information to uh, tweak his uh, ongoing um, uh, learning uh, sessions for us so please if you don't mind to complete that um, on our behalf and coming forward we have two seminars uh, webinars that I just mentioned to you um, on August 22nd Tuesday August 22nd the Montreal Exchange will be providing a, a webinar on option myths and that's for the those who would like to learn more uh, level two and also then, uh, AJ will be back with us again on August 24th, that's Thursday, August 24th, to provide some points on trading success. So the webinar there is five points for trading success, and that'll be by AJ on August the 24th. So please then, uh, if you don't mind, just go to the uh, scotiaitrade.com website, click on the education link, therefore, uh, then on the events calendar link, and just register for those webinars or for any other webinars that you might find useful. So once again, on behalf of Scotia iTrade and uh, the Client Education Department, I would like to thank AJ for an amazing presentation. And I'd like to thank you, our listeners, uh, for being with us today. We hope to see you again very shortly. And have yourself a great afternoon. Take care. Thank you.